Well, as you know, Richie has, Pastor Richie has been talking to us the past couple of Sundays about favor. And he declared a prophetic word over our church, if you were not here, and over the families of our church, that God was going to begin to rain favor in our lives. How many of you want favor in your life? The favor of God sounds pretty good, right? And I believe that God absolutely wants to favor every single one of us in this room. And when I was thinking about the message today and trying to, you know, decide where to land and who to talk about in the Bible, there's so many different examples of people that have had favor on their lives. But, but there was one in particular that definitely stands out, and of course, that's the story of Joseph, because Joseph definitely had favor. And at times in his life, it looks like he's very favored by God, but then there's other times in his life where he, it looks like God isn't even with him. And so I just want to kind of look at his life and talk to you about favor. Um, so Joseph was born to his father when his dad was really old. And uh, his father's name is Jacob. And Jacob had other sons and daughters. He had already been down this road. But, but here comes Joseph in his old age. And the Bible makes it very clear that Joseph was his favorite. How many of you have a sibling and you say, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, they're the favorite. They're the favorite. Any, anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, how many of you say, oh, I know I'm the favorite? Yes. Okay. I hope your sibling doesn't attend this service with you if you're raising your hand. But Joseph was the favorite. In fact, God, uh, the, his dad made a coat for him of many colors. Are you familiar so far with the story? And he gives him this coat, and Joseph begins to wear it. And the Bible says that because of how much their father favored Joseph, his brothers hated him. They had great hatred for their brother. And one day, at 17 years old, God gives Joseph a dream. And he shows him all of his brothers that had probably been very mean to him and very, you know, difficult with him because they were jealous of him. And God shows him all these brothers coming in and they're bowing down before him. Like he's the big dog. He's an authority over them. And so this young 17-year-old boy does a very foolish thing, if you ask me. And he goes to all the brothers that hate him and he says, guess what I dream? Not only do I have the coat of many colors, not only am I our father's favorite, but also I had a dream from God that you're going to bow down to me one day, and I'm going to be your boss. Doesn't sound very smart to me. So the brothers, the Bible said that this caused the brothers to hate him all the more. And they strip Joseph of that coat of many colors, and they take him and they sell him into slavery. Now, when you think you've had a bad day, I want you to kind of think about that because that's a bad day. Amen? So, Joseph is sold into slavery, and he ends up in Potiphar's house. He's a slave in Potiphar's house. Now, Potiphar is the top guy in Egypt, okay? And I want to pick the story up in Genesis 39, chapter 2, right here. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor. Everybody say, Joseph found favor. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the house of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself about anything except the food he ate. You see, Potiphar recognized that the Lord had favored Joseph, and so he put everything in his hands. But the next line of Scripture shows us a problem for Joseph. Are you ready? 
Now Joseph was well built and handsome, the Bible says. And the problem with this is Potiphar had a wife who had a wandering eye. And she noticed that Joseph was well built and handsome, and she went in to seduce him. Listen, if you're not reading your Bible, you should be. There's all kinds of stuff in there, interesting. And she goes in to seduce him. And Joseph says, my master has withheld nothing from me in his kingdom except you. So, no, ma'am, I cannot be a part of this. And, in fact, he runs out screaming, the Bible says. And when, she, when he runs out to scream, she grabs his cloak. He comes out of it, and she's left holding it in her hands. And I can imagine with the embarrassment and the humiliation of being denied, she goes to Potiphar, her husband, and she says, look what this guy has done to me. She lies on him. So, again, Joseph finds himself being stripped of this code of authority, and he's sent into prison. That's a bad day. Poor Joseph, he's really facing it. Would you agree? So I want to pick the story up here in chapter 21, um, excuse me, verse 21. It says, but while, right before that verse, it says, but while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison. And he was made responsible of all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Church, what I'm trying to show you in the life of Joseph is that the Lord wants to be with every single one of us and give us favor in everything that we do. It's very evident in the life of Joseph. And I want to say this, our Heavenly Father is not like Joseph's father. Joseph, Joseph's father played favorites. He was unfair, right? Can we all agree that he was a little unfair? Well, God is not unfair. God, what he offers to one of us, he offers to all of us. God wants to favor you. Everybody say, God wants to favor me. Y'all didn't say that like you meant it, though. Say, God wants to favor me. There you go. There you go. So... Joseph had a coat of many colors, and I do not have a coat of many colors because I don't roll that way, but I do have the story for you today of many coats. And so I want to talk to you about the coats, and these coats represent areas in our lives that God wants to favor us in. Are you ready for this? The first coat that I believe God wants to favor us in is the coat of leadership. We can see in the life of Joseph that God, no matter where he was in life, whether he was in his father's house or whether he was in the king's house or whether he was in prison, wherever he was, God caused him to rise up to some kind of leadership position. And there's a man in the Bible that came to Jesus in the New Testament. He was the centurion soldier. And he said to him, Lord, I am a man in authority, like I have people under me, but I also am a man under authority. So am I saying today that God wants to make every single Christian own a business? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's not the case. But what I'm saying is wherever you are in life, whatever your workplace exists, even in your family and in whatever capacity that you live your life in, God absolutely wants to use you and elevate you as a leader where you are. And he wants to favor you that way. Why? The Bible says that if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our kids, how much more will our Heavenly Father in Heaven do that for us? You know, we, want, we love it when we can give good things to our kids, right? Well, God's the same way, and He wants to favor us with leadership to bless us. But also look at this. If His children are risen up to a place of leadership, that means that our voice is louder in that area. And whenever we proclaim the good news of the gospel, we have a place of authority to proclaim it from. God wants to use your voice where you are, and he will raise you up to leadership in order to do that. The Bible says that 
God wants us to be the head, not the tail. The lender, not the borrower. How many of you want to be the lender, not the borrower today? He says he wants you to be above only, not beneath. God wants you to be at a level of leadership. And maybe you say today, I could never do that. I'm too shy. Well, maybe you are in your own strength, but not in God's. Just let God elevate you and take you higher because that's exactly what he wants to do, the code of leadership. Secondly, I believe God wants to put on each and every one of us, y'all ready for this? Okay, I'm just checking, I don't know. God wants to put on us the coat of protection. So this is a raincoat in case you can't tell. It's a very thin raincoat. We're just working with what we have, okay? But this raincoat is designed for me to step out in the rain in and not get wet. Are we all in agreement? When I put this raincoat on, it doesn't stop the rain. Would you agree? When I put this raincoat on, all it does is creates a barrier in between me and the rain. And that's exactly what God wants to do in our lives is he wants to put a coat of protection on us to keep our lives safe from everything that's going on in our world. The Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. The rain is going to come. In fact, in the world that we live in, we can get very scary. We can start thinking, man, I don't even know if I can go to the store in safety. I don't know if I can put my kids in school and then be okay. I don't know if my finances are going to be okay. This economy is crazy, and we can really get into a, a, a very very negative way of thinking that causes us to be fearful. But can I tell you that as children of God, the rules are different for you. I used to tell my girls that all the time when maybe they'd be battling something. I'd say, wait a second, the rules are different for you. Because as Christ followers, we are fully submitted to God. We have a different set of rules. That means that if it's raining and the storms of life are hitting, it can be hitting all around us and somehow we are safe. Scripture tells us in Psalm 91, it says, a thousand may fall at your side. Are, are you hearing that? A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. You see the destruction we're hearing about right here is close enough to be seen, but it can't touch us. I also think about Rahab, and, and this is a fascinating story to me, which I still don't feel like I quite understand, but she was a prostitute in the Bible, and some spies came in to spy out her land, and she knew they were there, and she also heard that the authorities of her land were looking for them. So she had mercy on them. She grabs them up, and she hides them in her house. Are you with me? And they're hiding in her house until the authorities pass by, and she knows it's safe for them to leave. She has them leave, tells them how to get out safely, but before they go, she says this, when we know that God is with you, and when you come back to attack this city, I want you to remember me and my family, and I want you to take care of us and keep us safe. And so they said, we will do that if you do this. And one of the things they told her she had to do in order to be safe was to take her and her family before the attack, go into her home, shut the door, and don't leave. Now, this is the part that I don't understand. Do you know where Rahab lived? The Bible says that Rahab lived in the wall of the city. Now, the scripture also says that whenever the Israelites came to attack that city, they marched around that wall six times in silence. And the seventh time, they marched around that wall. And when they did, they shouted, and the wall came tumbling to the ground. How is it that Rahab was inside her home in that wall when it fell, and she and her family were safe? I'm going to tell you why. Because God clothed her with a coat of protection. And God does not determine your safety based on situations in life. You're under a different set of rules as God's kid. Years ago, my mom and dad, they're here this morning. 
Wave at everybody. Give them a little wave. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wave at them. My, they owned a very successful paint and body business, and they worked on cars. Now, the Lord, my dad had begun seeking God about a business as a young guy, and, and God led him into this business. So God gave him this business. He didn't even know how to work on cars. God began to teach him and favor him. The Holy Spirit showed him what he needed to see, and he became very successful. In fact, let me just brag on them for a minute. Y'all remember the show Walker, Texas Ranger? That's a good Texas show, but uh, they had all these trucks where they'd be shot at by bullets or stunts would happen. They'd be wrecked, and, and they would need a repairman to repair those trucks. Now, they're not just going to get any average Joe to do that. Would you agree? Well, they came to my dad. He repaired those trucks, so he's kind of Hollywood this morning, right? Wouldn't you agree? Um, but anyways, so as time went on, a man opened another paint and body business in the area, and he wasn't happy to share Carrollton with my dad. In fact, he began to say, I'm going to put him out of business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to destroy him. And one day, a man comes to my father and says, do you know what he's saying about you? He's saying he's going to put you out of business. And my dad looked at him and said, you know what? This man did not put me in business. And this man will not take me out of business. So it gets better. It gets better. So as time goes on, there was a storm that rolled through Carrollton. And it was massive. In fact, Dad said, I don't know if there was a tornado in it or what happened. But this man's business that was talking trash about my dad, his business was surrounded in a mix of other businesses as well. So it didn't stand alone by itself. And the storm came through, and guess what happened? It targeted that man's business, and it caused a tornado or something to come in on the roof of just that man's business. His is the only roof that caved in, and it caved in. And when it did, it smashed the cars that were in his business. And do you know what happened? He never recovered. Let me tell you, God's kids are always protected, and you don't mess with what belongs to God because he knows how to cover you and how to protect you. And God absolutely wants to cover us with the coat of his protection, physically, in our health, in our wealth. He wants to guard our families. He wants to guard and protect everything that pertains to us. Amen? Everybody say, God wants to cover me with protection. And my final coat here today is... It's this big, fun, poofy coat. And I chose this one because this, look, I'm going to put this hat on. It's just so much going on. Wouldn't you agree? But this coat is representing the coat of God's blessings. Because just like this coat is big and got a lot going on, God's blessing, he wants to cover every one of us with incredible blessings. And maybe you're in the room and you think, well, I sure don't feel like I'm very blessed. Well, that's not God's choice. I guarantee you, God wants to pour out blessings on your life. And I just want to take a minute to look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm going to do a good bit of reading, but I want to paint a picture for you of what the blessings of the Lord looks like. Before I do this section of this chapter, and let me come out of this jacket before I get too hot, everybody. Sorry. I'd love to keep it on, but it's too hot. Uh, this story this is, starts with blessings for obedience. Okay. Number one, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all of his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on earth. All these blessings will come to you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Are you ready? You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. 
The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading throw will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. And I love this part. It says, they will come at you in one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people as he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. The fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. And we're almost done. But the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hands. All the works of your hands God wants to bless. Um. Do not turn aside from any of the commands. I'm sorry, let me go back. Sorry, I missed my place. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods or serving them. It is very clear that God only wants blessings for us. Do you see that in this scripture? And I know he's talking a lot about blessing their crops and blessing their barns and their livestock will, you know, have babies and I don't have any livestock that I want pregnant or, you know, any crops that I'm trying to grow here. But you have to understand, back in Bible times, this was their livelihood. And God's saying to them, if you will obey me fully, if you will live your life like I am saying for you to live your life, if you'll put yourself fully in my hands, everything that you touch, I will bless it. And I will give you an abundance. He's not talking about a one-time blessing. God is talking about an overflow of blessings in their lives. And free life, that's exactly what God wants to do in your life and in my life. He wants to give us an overflow of blessings. And just like Pastor Richie said, it can be raining in the backyard and and not raining in the front yard or however he said it. And I don't really fully buy that because I've never seen that. But he said that's the way it works in Georgia, so we'll just go with that. But what I'm saying to you is it can be raining in this house and you not be receiving it. We've got to get ourselves to the position that we can receive the favor of God. How many of you want favor? Stand up all over this room with me. I I have one more It's not a coat, but I have one more thing here to represent us. And oftentimes in life, we try to humanize God. And we try to come up with our own set of rules for how we're going to receive from God. And can I just tell you that that will never work? God does not and will never uh, abide by the rules that we put in place for him. And oftentimes I think we get frustrated with God because he's not playing like we think he should. He's not following our guidelines and our rules, but it just doesn't work that way. We have to do it God's way, but we we come up with our own set of rules, and we think, well, I'm going to try to get favor from my boss this way, or I'm going to try to do this that way, and I'm going to try to rise up to leadership this way, or or I'm going to try to get favor with my kids, or I'm going to try to get God's attention this way. And what happens is we're trying all these things, not like God taught us to, and we're coming up short. See, this is not a coat of favor. This is just a vest, and it's missing arms. If I were to walk out in the cold, I'm going to be cold. It's missing arms. I'm going to get rained on. It's not covering and protecting me. It's too short like God wants it to. Why? Because these are my plans. This is trying to do it my way, trying to get God results based on human standards. And we have to be very, very intentional to know this. That God wants to put every one of these codes on every single Christ follower in this room. 
But the way he's going to do it is the way he's designed to do it. So if you're in this room, before we leave this morning, I want to ask you, how many of you are hungry to know how to receive favor from the Lord this morning? If you lift your hand up all over this room, how many of you want to have favor with God? How many of you would love to have favor with your boss, favor in your workplace, favor with your family, favor in life in general? Father, I pray for every single one of these people in this room that have their hands lifted. And, Lord, you see they are many. And, Father, my hand's lifted too because I desire your favor. Lord, I pray that you'll begin to open our eyes and show us how we can receive this kind of favor. Lord, I pray you'll help every one of us begin to walk in a new level of favor with you and with people. And, Father, I pray... Although this message is to encourage us and strengthen us, I know that there's got to be people in this room this morning that have come in heavy with something. And so before we leave, Father, I just want to pray for them. And I want to pray that you strengthen them. Father, I pray that you will encourage them. I pray that your peace will just be here in this moment, reassuring them, strengthening them, and encouraging them. And if you're in this room today, before we leave, and you don't know Jesus, but you want to. Or maybe you're here and you've just walked away and you haven't been living your life for him like you should. And you want to pray. Would you lift your hand up all over this room so I can see you? Thank you, Father. Yes. I want us to pray this corporately together. But if you pray this prayer and you believe it in your heart, you will be saved. And you'll be in right relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Father, today... Come on, you repeat it after me. Father, today I come to you a sinner. I've messed up. But I know you sent Jesus for me. And I know he's in heaven with you today. And he's going to come back for me one day. And so I ask you, will you forgive me of my sins? Will you cleanse me from all unrighteousness and make me your child? In Jesus' name. Today, Lord, you are my Savior, and I serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are in right relationship with Jesus. There's the QR code if you want to go for more information and for some help in your journey. Before we leave, remember, church, God plays fair. And what he offers to one, he offers to all. God wants to favor you. That's an exciting message, right? But today we haven't talked about the application. You see, the scripture is very clear on how we obtain favor from God and how we obtain favor from man. And so I want you to come back next week so we can talk the, about the how-to. How do we make this happen? So y'all come back next week and we'll talk about it. But before we do, raise your hands all over the room so I can bless you out today. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance to you, cover you with his name, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, y'all come back next week and we'll see you then.